Major funding for these programs is provided by grants from Capital One Bank and Perfect Building Maintenance, Murray Hill Properties, SJP Properties, Cushman and Wakefield, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, New York Community Bank, Bank of America, Kilroy Metal Products, New York's Window Company. Additional funding is provided by Akron Gold Brothers, LLC, Briarwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Investment Fund, Essex Capital Partners, Excel Realty Advisors, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, First Service Williams, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Helmsley Spear, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Madison Realty Capital, M&T Bank, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Must Development, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal & Rosenthal, Signature Bank, Sterling & Sterling, Stephen Napolitano, Stonehenge Partners, Studley, The Moynian Group. Hello, my name is Michael Stoller. New York City, the nation, everybody loves retail. Retail is what fuels the fire. Hopefully this recession is not having that much of a, a problem on retail, but today I brought together a, a diverse group of people involved in different aspects of retail. My guests, they include Joanne Podell, Executive Vice President at Cushman & Wakefield, Carlo Tunioli, President of Benetton, Charles Hurst, President of Millbrook Properties, and last but not least, Michael Weeks, uh, Vice President at Godiva Chocolate. So, you know, I, I have the broker of, of the retail world. Everybody knows uh, Joanne on a national and international focus. We have uh, our friend over here who specifically, Benetton, everybody knows it's worldwide 5,500 stores. Uh, Charles, you have like 22 malls, something like that. Shopping centers. Uh, shopping centers, you know, all types from, you know, strip shopping centers to power centers. And uh, everybody knows, uh, Michael, how many? Uh, We've got about 270 stores. 270 stores. In the United States. In the U.S. So let, let, also owned by a Turkish company, right? Yes. Bought it from Campbell Soup uh, about a year ago today. So what do you see with this recession? What's happening? What effect is it having on your retail business? You always want sales to be better than they are, but at the end of the day, when I look at everything that's published in the Wall Street Journal and everywhere else, I'll take our sales. You know, as, as somebody said, that down six is the new flat. So um, I, I'm, we're actually in a pretty good situation. As we were talking about it earlier, 40% of our portfolio is up for renewal over the next three years. And so this is a year where we're concentrating more on coming up with a comprehensive strategy as far as a go forward and a growth vehicle rather than building lots of stores this year. So. Um, this, the economy, ironically, we're in a pretty good situation to weather what's going through. And what about your your leases coming up? Uh, we have uh, f several leases coming up. However, the economy in general that we know is very soft, to say the least, uh, has a significant impact on retailing, uh, no question about it. We'll, uh, uh, try to find this cycle to restructure the operation and try to make uh, better deals. So speaking of better deals, yes. he is the landlord. So what's happening with, with tenants? You know, prior to the show, we mentioned that Sleepies, which it's been publicly announced, that they have been going to their landlords and asking for 25% reduction. What you said before is they, they're asking and then they're sending, they're having the audacity to send you a check for 25% less. Well, it wasn't an ask as much as it was a demand, rather. Uh, and, you know, everything's negotiable. They know that they can't do that, you know, for most of their leases. So once you get it, just time to call up and negotiate. You know, if they're, if you don't have the ability to negotiate with them, then you have to take it. Uh, but in most cases, you know, you have the ability to say, 
well, you know, what do you really need, and can I extend the lease here, or, you know, but, but, you know what let's, can you get let's, out of let's it? Let's talk about the ability to negotiate. If somebody is on the lease, unless it's a right. single-purpose uh, LLC, limited liability company for my, you know, if the parent corporation, if, if Godiva Chocolate or Benetton's on the lease, they're still liable. They're not that, filing no. bankruptcy. Yeah, but, but, yeah, like but like they were saying about been. extending, I mean, a perfect example, if their lease exactly expires right. in three years, I'll negotiate with them now and say, okay, extend your lease, I'll give you a break now, and either you extend for a period of time past what your normal expiration is or exercise your option early, or we'll have an ability that, you know, I can give a cancellation notice. If I'm giving you a break now and the market changes and you don't want to, you don't want to pay what the new rent would be, I want a cancellation notice that uh, I can... So, so wait, what you're saying, Charles, is like the give and take. Yes. Now, but certain, what are you seeing, you know, in, the, in the world? We're partnering. Uh, we're partnering with our landlords. Any of the tenants that I represent, and in the case of landlords that I represent, we spend a lot of time coming up with a plan. And it's not just sending a letter right. <laughs> to a landlord. I don't think that's a good way to inure yourself to someone no. and get to the point where you really want to get to. So you, you sit down and you talk with them and you say, listen, let me show you what my sales look like this year versus what they were in the last couple of years. And we all know that maybe 2008, 2007 were an anomaly. If you go back to a 2005 and 2006, those would probably be more representative of what sales volume can be. And you say to them, what can you do with me now? Let, right. Let's give me a little bit of a break. I'll, I'll give you a percentage rent. And when my business comes back, we'll talk about it. We'll set up some kind of a formula where, whereby we can pay you more money. I, and I, yeah, I, I, that's I don't a way want to, to be do biased it. on the landlord, but if, if Charles is, is a landlord and he has a mortgage coming due to, to, to the bank, and the bank <laughs> yeah. says, you have to make this debt service each month. You know, you can do that on one or two, but you can't do it on everyone because then he's not going to be able to be sitting with us over yeah, here. He'll Michael, be in court. The, the problem right. is it depends on who your landlord is, obviously. That, that we should have made that statement first right. because the landlords that have bought property in the last number of years are so highly leveraged that the bank really does dictate whether or not they're permitted to make these kind of adjustments. And, and that's when you're working with landlords that have a significant funds behind them or are healthy, then you don't have the same issues. But, but I also think in, the case, in our particular case, it's not a question of necessarily going back with the entire portfolio, but when 40% is up for renewal in the next three years, to your point, rather than looking at it as a deal by deal by deal basis, okay. we sat down and said, okay, here's the strategy we want to implement. Landlord, developers, here's what we think, tell us what you think, and then to your point, we're trying to come to some consensus so everyone feels good about the results. You know, but here, here's the point. People look at Godiva as a premier, high quality, you know, item. They look at Benetton as, as, as a very, you know, not a Gap, it's a much better product than the Gap. It has a much more fashion and all the rest. They, they look at it in this way. How do you, as a landlord, when you're sitting there making determination, I mean, you rather have them than a 99 cent store. I mean, I mean, how do you, but how do you look at it? I mean, here's a company, 5,500 stores, 125 over here, 273 stores over here, coupled with, you know, a major corporation. How do you look at it when you're thinking of signing a lease with somebody today? Well, I mean, certainly the larger store, the more, you know, secure the chain, if we're talking national chains, the more likely you are to try and do a deal with somebody. And, and even if it came to a rent reduction, even if somebody said to me, listen, we're hurting this location, what can you do? Send me your sales for the last several years. Let me, you know, certified sales. Let me see what you're doing there. There's no reason to force out or, or create a problem with somebody to not get them to renew now because of a, you know, if they are the majority tenant in the center, like or a drawer to the center, you don't As, want an empty store. Either. I don't want an empty store. And there's, you know, in some respect, a lot of landlords will also put in one or two good tenants as a loss leader to bring in the rest of the clientele. So if they're going to the mall for Benetton and he's a drawer to bring in that age group to the stores to, you know, help everybody else. Even if I give him a break, everybody else could do stronger. If he goes out, everybody's going to suffer that much more. That I'm going to have to give that much more in rent reduction. I mean, look, everybody knows that Circuit City has gone out of business. Right. So there, there are places, you know, both malls, power centers, and other places that you're going to have a big box, which is vacant. So the question is, you know, 
that's too big for you. Yep. We can probably put in 50, you know, 50 <laughs> stores for you. It's a lot of chocolate. Okay, a lot the of chocolate. Some manufacturing right. there. Yeah. You know, we can make a manufacturing. We can, you know, make it a, the chocolate factory. So wh what do you see happening? You know, you, you say you have all these rents coming up. And, and I mean, in New York City, you know, uh, you know, I see freestanding stores and then I see right. you know like in 200 Park Avenue you have this small kiosk store and in Time Warner you have a small store you have three stores in Time Warner Rock Center which is the best locations for you where, where do you think is the the best venue for both of your operations but well, definitely for us are the high traffic you know the fifth Avenue is the, the stores at the Time Warner that are doing pretty well some of them that are doing very well um, so, inevitably, is the main street or the uh, regional uh, mall? You know, you, you bring up Time Warner, and both of you have operations yeah. in Time Warner. Time Warner, I still remember when it opened. Uh, I was a negative, and I was writing for The Sun, and I basically thought it was going to be a failure. I, I didn't yeah. think it was going to be the water tower. That's be awesome. No, be, because, you know, you just <laughs> look at it. Ironically, later on, I went to work for the guys who developed it. It was even rather hard for me to, to say that. Uh, but, you know, Time Warner has done well. But as opposed to places like uh, 803rd Avenue, which is, which is a, a center, you know, Trump, Trump did terrible. Why, why does a Time Warner do better for a Benetton than you could have been in a Trump Tower or in 803rd Avenue or other places? What do you see the reason for that? Okay, we're talking about uh, vertical retailing in Manhattan. Right. It has been a taboo. <laughs> but, uh, well, I think that they exec executed very well at that center. And obviously they, bit, they pour an enormous amount of money. Uh, in addition, they have the residential, uh, the hotel, you know, there are several components there and the, the headquarters for Time Warner and the location because obviously it's Columbus Circle. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I, think I think it's a combination it's of factors, but uh, uh, probably uh, the major reason of the success, I think, is uh, the significant amount of capital invested bringing together all the compo proper components. But I also think from a location standpoint, you're, it's 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 more than a neighborhood. I mean, you could sort of call it that. The it's a destination. West side. It's, it's kind a of a, it's, it's actually regional. Yeah. If you had some way to determine and define it, markets in New York yes. City. I mean, Third Avenue is such a neighborhood, and it's a yeah. great neighborhood, and I love it. But AOL Time Warner, it's so accessible by the subway. You know, you, you've got a lot of great retail on the Upper West Side, but they brought a lot of tenants to that project that currently were not on but, the Upper West Side. But you know, let's talk about the Upper West Side. You have stores on the Upper West Side? No, no we did. In the past. You did have one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and because Columbus Avenue was a very well trafficked location. I, and I yeah. remember when the Gap was there, when you yeah. were there, a lot of other people. We're on they, Columbus and on Broadway. You're on Columbus and Broadway. Yes. And you have a freestanding store. In both. And how are they doing in the. Broadway, throughout my retail career, this is my personal opinion, but Broadway is more of a retail street and Columbus feels more like a restaurant street Absolutely to me. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And, and I think as a retailer, I really like Broadway, but restaurant-wise, I think Columbus is a, the better street. Mm -hmm. and, and what about your regional shopping centers? What's doing the best? Is, uh, I mean, the recession having an effect uh, on sales you see in Long Island or Rockland, yeah. which, which one's the best and what? I mean, well, Long Island is, is typically the strongest market that, that we own shopping centers in. Uh, and I would say probably the weakest would be Rockland County or New Jersey. Uh, but Long Island sales are strong. I mean, there are certainly some businesses that are doing stronger than others. You know, we were talking earlier liquor stores. You know, I heard in one of your other programs that w liquor sales in restaurants, and that is true in stores as well. Um, they're doing very well. You know, a lot of the lower-priced items are, are moving. Grocery stores are doing very well right now, too. Yeah. You know, people are eating out less, although they're still eating out. They're eating out less, so yeah. they're shopping for themselves and, and cooking at home more. What do you see? Who's renting today? Well, there's still activity. There's still bank activity. There is activity with some of the apparel users. Foreign users are in town. We know that Sir Philip Green will be opening up Top Shop. Who? I think it's Sir Philip Green, and he's opening Top Shop, and we'll have to see. Um, I, I believe he'll be very successful. Um, the uh, opportunity today, because of the difference in the market, the, 
there, the economic conditions are positive or negative. You're looking at it yes. from the perspective of renewing. I'm a broker looking at it from the opportunity side for new tenants. And for the first time, people that were really priced out of the market are able to come in. Yes. That's and true. that's exciting because it means that the tenant mix will change and we'll see new people. Instead of having all the old same players, there'll be new new companies coming into the United States. That's important. And they come to New York first, generally You speaking. know, it's interesting. Charles brings up New Jersey. And uh, I just recently wrote an article. There, there are two major shopping centers in Paramus. One of them is added close to 600,000 square feet. And the other one, you know, with uh, Whole Foods, one's, it's ironic, one is having Whole Foods, and the other one's having Fairway Market. Yep. And, and, you know, uh, a lot of people go to New Jersey, and, and they're probably going to continue unless they change the sales tax. They go to New Jersey because there's no tax on clothing. Right, right. Uh, and, you know, you go out to Nassau and Suffolk County, there is tax on clothing. Without a doubt. And, and that has, uh, it's had an effect on certain of the retailers, even in the outlet centers. I was out in Tangers, I was talking to some of the, the stores, and they said a number of people are going out of business. Saks was very close to closing their store out there, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, some of the uh, Lind, as we were saying, is is remaining. You know, they're closing a lot of their regular stores, and they're going into into the into the outlet centers. That's where they're they're geared to. But you're in. Are you in some outlet centers? Yes, we are. We're Woodbury Commons only. Um, but Woodbury is like a high class outlet center. Yeah, right. You're right, it's, right. It, it's, it's a separate. It's well, we are in Sawgrass, Florida. <laughs> another one. <laughs> So we, we are in several, but, you know, uh, what they call premium outlets. So uh, today, both of you are operators who, who have an opportunity, well-capitalized companies on this. So where where do you want to open up? Where, where do, you know, if, some, if, if, if Joanne came to you and said there are certain opportunities, uh, are you interested, you know, because the week before when we had the, the, the restaurant guys, we were talking about the meat market. And they're worried about that. They're, they're not certain about meat packing, the meatpacking yeah. district. If it's if it's really you know it did well during the high time, and they're a little worried about it yeah. today. What's your thoughts about that well, area? Uh, definitely, we'll look at uh, you know still the major uh, traffic hubs. In other words, the, the Fifth Avenue. Uh, we still have a, we have a store there. Probably, if there are some other opportunities, you know it. it there are 40 million people who are going through Fifth Avenue in a year, so I think it's uh, inevitable, especially for an international company, to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, look at, look at 34th the meat packing. 34th Street's yeah. wonderful. 34th Street's one of the best shopping streets. It's not for you. Oh, actually, it is yeah. for you. <laughs> I take that back. The it's Hell not Square. for you. Would, yeah. Honestly, would you want to be there? I think we'd look at 34th Street. I mean, we did the Solstice store. Did very very well there, sure. and they were selling $200 plus sunglasses. Yeah. So I don't necessarily think. See, I, I think you're right. Um, I'm surprised that you said it, and I'm delighted because it, the, the perspective is it's about foot traffic and density, and uh, that's I, I, how you I, determine I think, whether or not you'll do well. I think a question of where on 34th Street. Is, yeah, that's like, a good question. I, I think, I think that, you know, getting if you, 34th Street between 7th and 8th is not a place for you. It's yeah. not a place for you. Yeah. 34th Street between 5th and 6th, going close to... To right. seventh, so, maybe, but not too far yeah, close right. to seventh, that's because there's a difference. In, 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 you know, if I was H and M, that's the. Yeah. It's a lower right. price. You know, somebody once said to me, "You go to H and M, you buy the you buy the outfit, you can throw it away the next day, yep. because it's geared right. to, to yes. that type of operation." Right. You know, but that's I, true. I, I think, well, it, got, but you've got Macy's, and the reality is, we do. We've got a wholesale business as well as a retail business, and that's a that's a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal account, yeah. and that's. Pretty much the heart of 34th Street. But yeah. what about Times Square, which yeah, is a I totally, which yeah. is a totally different. We have a store on 40th and Broadway, and we've got a store in the Lehman Brothers Building. What is that? 50th and Broadway. 74. Yes. Uh, 570. Yeah. So we yes. have two stores in the Times Square area. Yeah. Both of them do very well. Times Square is interesting. I always tell tenants that are coming to New York that are really not familiar with the various trading areas that you can liken it to Las Vegas because it's the only place in town that literally you could have all these extended hours and it's busy seven days a week. Personally, I don't well, like to hang out there, but I agree with that. Yeah. Right. But actually, Forever 21 is taking over Virgin right. Megastore. I mean, That's you exactly know, I wrote right. that up in my article. I mean, for, you know, Virgin made money in their store, 
uh, and they are they are close to five six million dollars over mm -hmm. there. But Vornado is now getting no more five point four million. They're getting twenty million dollars. Yep. I mean, yeah. certain type of people can afford it, and they they truly hope because it is a very busy neighborhood. But it's not for everyone. What what type of tenants, you know, who are coming to you today? You know, there are retailers. Well, you know, it depends on the location. You know, we have property in Manhattan as well. You know, a lot of mixed-use properties. Even in Washington Heights on 181st, which is very highly trafficked, you know, we have property there, and we have a lot of national retailers looking. They'll pay $200 a square foot to be in Washington Heights on 181st, St. Nicholas. But, but you know what? As you, as you s no. Yeah. no, no, not, not your brand. No, no, sure. But you know what? The funny no, thing is, there is high-end retailer. Yeah, there are people selling $200 pair of sunglasses, like you were talking yeah. before. They're there wait, wait, in stores. Absolutely. It's selling sunglasses. There's a certain. There's a certain element of type of clothing or elements yes. that, that work in the neighborhood. I mean, people weren't going to the Bronx. I mean, I did a show on retail in the Bronx, and I said, look, I'll give it away at $8 a foot to, to get a tenant in certain parts of the Bronx. You know, it's, but on Fordham Road, the retail is great. Fordham, I mean, Fordham, Ford, Fordham Road is a place that you, I can see you, I'm not certain mm -hmm. about Godiva, but I could definitely see a, a Benetton mm -hmm. opening up on a Fordham Road. What, what about, you said you're in Manhattan, what about the boroughs? You know, people, you know, people sometimes say we're too Manhattan centric. What's, what's the, where? We, we have uh, stores in Brooklyn, we have a store in um, Astoria, uh, we have a few stores around in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, m m uh, all these stores are uh, the clients' operation. And what, what about you in the boroughs? We're in Queens. I'm trying to figure out if we're in Brooklyn or not. We definitely consider it. I'm a huge fan of Brooklyn. Brooklyn's the most under-retailed borough. You know, you talk about that, which may be very interesting. You know, very hype, and you know, the neighborhood is Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, the, the really only apparel, from what I remember, and I, don't, I haven't spent too much time there, I'm too old, for Williamsburg, <laughs> is American Apparel happens to have a store in Williamsburg. They'd be a great tenant over there. You know, and, yeah. I, and I, 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 think, yeah. I think the Williamsburg section or the Brooklyn Heights section, which, which is... Actually, Benetton the, you know, would do well there Benetton as well. Benetton would. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think both right. of the, the locations over there. Now, would you expand in the boroughs? Sure. We, I mean, we have now. You know, listen, I, I, up until recently, I'll say the... Market didn't allow for true expansion if you're a long-term holder like we are. But we've had, you know, a lot of property in the boroughs and in the Bronx. We have strip centers and obviously retailers and multifamily as well. And we do it in the Bronx and in Brooklyn and Queens and obviously Manhattan. So without a doubt, we'd expand. But you know, the market has to correct itself, which is starting to happen, of course. What type of size store are you would are you looking to open? Five thousand, seven thousand. No, these are the only certain location we go above the 5,000. The average is uh, on a 26, 2,500 square oh, so feet. So you're smaller, yeah. and your stores are what? About 1,000 square feet. And In Manhattan, they're probably smaller. Now, the interesting thing is, in some of your stores, I mean, you have the dipping, as we were talking. Yes. How does the dipping do? You know, people always say, does Godiva make money on this dipping, or do they waste money at the end? Because if somebody doesn't finish it at the end, right. they give it to City Harvest or something like that? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's a part of the business that's growing. It's, um, in this economy, self-consumption is, is becoming a primary use for chocolate, and so there's a focus on that. It also creates some theater and some activity within the store, so anyone walking by sees something that's going on and helps to draw them into the store. Um, you know, you, you've always got a challenge. You may have a ton of people walking through the mall or walking down the street, but there's nothing inside that they want to look at or taste or try. They keep walking. So that gives us an opportunity to not just create that theater, but in addition, it can change seasonally. So they've done marshmallows and strawberries and different kinds of chocolate bark, and it, it allows us to, to create newness within the store. And so we're very excited about that. What about ice cream? It comes up all the time, and I don't know the ins and outs of ice cream, so I can't really tell you, but it's, it's a lot trickier business than dipping marshmallows in the window. Now, you know, can't you see, and I'm not doing the merger mm -hmm. over here. Could, <laughs> could, could, I could, could dive a cafe okay. inside one of your stores. I'm not, you know, you know because you bring up the, 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 the cafe, <laughs> uh, the, the cafe concept, you know, in many Capital One, in Manhattan, a number of Capital One stores have the Starbucks uh, yep. in yes. there. You know, there there is that cafe concept, uh, and I think at one time, didn't Godiva even have little cafes in certain they, locations? They do. They have a chocolate elixir. They have a drink component, 
that's uh, we're still tinkering with and deciding how we want to go. Actually, in Japan, they do something we call Godiva Express, for lack of a better word. And it's basically the Penn stations and the Grand Central stations, and it's more of a food and self-consumption and drink sort of concept, and then gifty during the seasons. It'll include that. And we've got so many other things going on in our world right now that we're not ready to execute that. Um, having said that, it is something that's in the back of our mind. So what do you see, you know, on the broker side? Uh, how are landlords besides Charles and others reacting to this recessionary time? Well, as I mentioned, those landlords that are in the business for the long term, long term holders, yes. not leveraged, are fine. They're, they'll so they'll get through this with all of us. I, I think that's going to be somewhat problematic for some of the groups that have bought properties recently, um, and, and that's a shame because they help to build this market. But I think the brokerage community is changing, and we've talked about this a little bit. Brokers today what we do, how we work with our clients, is a lot different than it was in the past. Uh, we provide a lot more in the way of information. You're no longer so an order taker. No, absolutely I, I not. Mean, I'm not saying you ever were, no. but there were brokers who said, hey, I got this location. You want this store? I don't care. There was no negotiation. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. You you needed me yeah. as opposed. To, and, and the world has changed. And, yeah. and in this recessionary situation, you know, people are looking. You know, Charles heard me speak the week before. You know, certain landlords are in certain markets giving away better terms and conditions because certain people, as the restaurant guys said, they want to bring that tenant in. They want to bring in the Godiva. They want to bring in the Benetton. You know, there's there's a cachet, and that that attracts other tenants. It breeds it, traffic. It breeds traffic, yeah. and the breeding of the traffic sometimes, in a way, I hate to say, it's the lost leader. Well, I said that before. And you know, not only is it a lost leader in that respect, but it really does bring everybody else's sales up. So now, if you have all the other remaining tenants, they could pay more rent if their sales are stronger. So, you know, 30 minutes is never enough time for me to have a show, especially in retail. But I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, Joe M. Podell, Carlo Tunio, Charles Hirsch, and uh, Michael Weeks. Uh, see you next week. Major funding for these programs is provided by grants from Capital One Bank and Perfect Building Maintenance, Murray Hill Properties, SJP Properties, Cushman and Wakefield, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, New York Community Bank, Bank of America, Kilroy Metal Products, New York's Window Company. Additional funding is provided by Akron Gold Brothers, LLC, Briarwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Investment Fund, Essex Capital Partners, Excel Realty Advisors, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, First Service Williams, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Helmsley Spear, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Madison Realty Capital, M&T Bank, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Must Development, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal, Signature Bank, Sterling and Sterling, Stephen Napolitano, Stonehenge Partners, Studley, The Moynian Group.